Hey, I got a lot of depressing stuff. It's reality. It's politics in North America. Wow, we're upside down in so many places, but I got to share humor with you to start the day. And then I'll depress you, okay? Here it comes. You have an American, a Mexican, and a Canadian. They all died and they went to heaven. No, they were bad folks and they went to hell. And the devil greeted them and said, welcome guys. And hey, here's the telephone. It's a red phone. You can use it with a charge, a big charge. You all got to write me a check. You can use it to phone back to your country, right? This was kind of neat. So, so the Mexican, a couple of days later, he had the urge to call somebody in Mexico City, so he did. He talked for a half an hour and he got a big bill, paid it, all's good. And then the American, it was his turn. He says, I want to use the phone too. And he phoned somebody in San Francisco, talked for about an hour, big check, had to write it. That was okay. And then it was a Canadian's turn. He got up and he said, I want a phone candidate. Go ahead. There's the red phone. And he did. He was on the phone for four hours. Wow. The Mexican and the American said, this is going to be a huge bill. But after he was done, the devil came up and said, it's free. Ah. The American and the Mexican went ballistic and said, how come he gets a free call and we don't? And the devil said, you know what? <laughs> Ever since uh, Trudeau became the prime minister of Canada, the country has totally gone to hell. So it's a local call. Have you got that? Wow, well, that's depressing already, isn't it? Okay, now we're on to bigger and better things. You know, the Liberal Party in Canada, they represent everything, everything that ordinary Canadians are not. Liberal behavior is that political power is superiority and that the rest of us exist to serve them. They believe that they have a right to control how we think, where we go, what we say, what we eat, what we drive, how we worship, how we vote. And I think they even have think police, thought police coming. It is a socialist country, Canada. We say it like a joke. But I got to tell you, it ain't no joke. And, and there's more and more happening every day. And a lot of people like the roles. They, they, they fit into that. You know, we can kind of stand at attention and do what we're told. And, but many don't. Many have pushback. Me, I don't like rules much. I, I get that sometimes you have to have the odd one. But boy, oh boy, are we overruled. And what's going to happen? I, I, there has to be pushback from more people than just me. It's not a nice thing when you have people that aren't capable of running their own world out telling us how to run ours. I mean, freedom. We need freedom. In Canada right now, there's not a lot of that. Alaska is a nice country. <laughs> a nice country. A nice state. Okay. So I, I can't tell you. I have an airline. I can't tell you which one. I'd like to give you a clue or two, but I can't tell you right now. So, so many people say, I can't get my money back. When this COVID thing started, I had airline tickets booked and they put it into a credit file. And, and now I don't want to fly again, but what do I do? So I can tell you a story, what happened to me. And uh, it was probably in March. My wife and I and three grandchildren were going to go from ho different points to Hawaii. And it was almost $5,000. So with the last... Oh, with an airline. <laughs> and we said, um, we canceled. We had to cancel. So they said, you can't have your money back. It's in a credit file. So just the other day, I called this airline. And I booked a, a ticket. It was like 300 and some odd dollars to go somewhere. And an hour later, and I used the credit, a part of the credit file. And so an hour later, I changed my mind. I do that occasionally. And I called back and I said, I want to cancel that flight. And they said, well, put it back in your credit card. And I said, oh, you can do that? And they said, well, yeah. And I said, I thought that you couldn't. It has to go back into the credit file. And she said, no, when you rebook and if you cancel it, it goes back to the credit card. Hey, there's a secret for you. And it works, by the way. I went back later and I got all the money back. The mayor of San Francisco called President Trump a terrorist because uh, she was defending House Speaker Nancy Pelosi over this controversial uh, salon visit. And she said it was time to move on, but Trump is a terrorist. What a thing to say, it's time to move on and he's a terrorist in the same sentence, right? We have a terrorist, we have a dictator who's running this country. A dictator, really. He can't get much done, whether it be a wall or anything else. He's a business guy. He says, I'm going to do this. But, but he, you know what? He, he can't most of the time because he's got these two houses and the one of them is controlled by this Nancy crazy person. And then you have another crazy person, the mayor, saying that Trump is a terrorist. Wow. I, I mean, that's all subliminal stuff trying to get to the citizenry to make sure that they don't vote for him. It's no longer about him anyway. It's about right or left. Do you want to have a socialist nation or do you want to have a nation with some capitalist touches to it, right? Boy, oh boy. And then you got Joe Biden who recently made this statement. This is a guy that wants to run a country, okay? He said, Thomas Edison didn't invent the light bulb, a black man did. 
Okay, if you really dig into that, there was a black man that worked for Thomas Edison, but he didn't invent the light bulb. He helped streamline it, make it a little bit better a couple of years after the invention. But what's that got to do with the price of tea in China? In China, Ugh. You know what, and, and Biden and all of these people, they make it up as they go, they lie. They lie steadily, and I hope the American people can see through that, not just Americans. Them, of course, because they have to vote, have to do the little check mark, or the X, but, but the rest of the world. Canadians, are you listening? people in Britain, people everywhere. I mean, they're out to get this guy. I mean, like Biden, let's talk about him for a minute. Joe Biden, I'm talking to you now. Pay attention. Why did members of your family keep getting lucrative business opportunities overseas when you were vice president? How did your brother, Frank, secure $45 million in taxpayer loans from the Obama administration for some Caribbean project? How did he do that? And these are just ones that we know about. Whenever you know about one thing, there's 10 or 20 things that, of course, you don't know about, you don't find out about, because you're not supposed to. How did a newly minted firm employing your older brother James receive a $1.5 billion contract to build homes in Iraq, despite having zero experience in construction or development of any kind? How does that happen? How did your son Hunter go with you to Beijing <laughs> in December of 2013, he didn't do anything, but afterwards, and he can't speak Chinese or anything, or Mandarin or Cantonese, etc., he somehow secured a $1 billion investment deal from the state-owned Bank of China. And, and he's on various boards, and he's making millions of dollars a year, and, and he can't speak any of those languages. You know what? Uh, how, how does that work? I, I, wow, how about it doesn't? Oh, I guess it does if you're a crooked liberal, do you think? It is now official. The last thing I got to say today, a new religious group has written a passage that directs its people to having an easier life, and it is known as God's Own Official Guide to Locating Everything. Okay, have you got that? Everything, and, and, and you use everything. Bah, you use the first letter of each word, and guess what it spells? Google. God bless you. See ya.